verses 1 through 21, and then Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. Deuteronomy 6 is a very important set of verses to, to the Jewish people. This is known as the Shema. S-H-E-M-A. Shema. Okay? This is something that pious Jews pray every morning and every evening. Because it's very important to their faith. So I'm going to read it again. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord alone. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. You keep the words that I commanded you today in your heart. Recite them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fax, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The reason this is called the Shema is because the first word there, hear or listen, is Shema. Shema o Israel is what the first words are right there. Listen. Slavery. Egypt. They were just slaves in Egypt and God came and released them. And that's what happened in chapter 5, right? God went to the... Moses reminds the Israelites. Here's what's happening in Deuteronomy chapter 5. They're just about to go to the land. The wandering is over. How many years did they wander in the, in the desert? That's the first set of tablets. Right? Moses has to go back up and get them again. They've wandered 40 years because they didn't know how to listen to God. This person who gave us his name so that we can say it. That's why it says, Lord. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord alone is our God. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say the word mezuzah, nah, you need to, you need to Google it. Because that's what's happening here in homes. They will have on their door frames of every door going out of their house and to your gates. And they will touch it and remind them this. Right? The first three are about this relationship. The next seven are about these relationships. It's all about how we love God and love each other. Because you see, Jesus set us all free on the cross. But in this Old Testament lesson, we hear how God has set his people free and has given them his name. He's given them his name so that we can be in relationship with God. He's given us his name not so that we misuse the name of God by hurting ourselves or hurting anyone around us. Right? There's ways that we've seen this done. People put Christian fish emblems on their business cards or on their cars and then they're rude in traffic or they don't deal ethically or, or truly with people that they do business with. Or we wear crosses around our necks all day long and, and proclaim that we're Christian, but yet we treat people like they're garbage or not the way that they should be treated. Right? Is that why God gave us his name or the, the ability to proclaim who we are in the world? No, God gave us his name so that we could love him and tell people about him as well. So that we could display our love for God and then show everyone else how much God loves us and loves them. Right? The Shema comes after God's gifts to us. Right? This passage in Deuteronomy 6 is not given to them in Deuteronomy 5, right? 6 comes after 5. That sounds funny, but it does. Right? 6 comes after 5. 5, we get the proclamation that God did all of these wonderful things for us, and here's what we get to do now because God has given us all of these wonderful things. And then we're told to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and soul and mind. Why? Because of everything that God has already done for us. We don't have to love God to get this. God's already done this for us. But God wants you to love him. Because he loves all of his creation. And he wants you to do the same. He wants us all to treat every 